Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which is my very late <laughs> December wrap-up. So the month of December was quite a bit of a slower month. I, you know, we moved back home for the holidays and then, and I mean, that's where I'm currently filming this. It is the middle of January and we're about to head back to Minnesota, but uh, I wanted to try and get this video filmed and edited as quickly as possible. So in December, I only read eight books, which thinking of last year, that's still a good number, but looking back on how much I read per month this year, it's probably one of my lowest numbers, but that is perfectly okay. That's perfectly fine. I still beat my reading goal, which is great. Um, and like, it was just kind of a mediocre month, but I was just so busy with catching up with family, getting ready for the holidays, there being a blizzard <laughs> and then driving through the blizzard and then having the blizzard again so and I've done a lot of baking since I've been home so it's just been busy and and wonderful so I'm still gonna talk about the eight books that I read though in December starting with the one and only five star read of this month <laughs> Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco it took me a very long time to read this book and that is because when I first heard the book I was like okay I think that sounds interesting but I'm not super into it I guess like I was like oh this is gonna be a really popular book it's probably gonna be overhyped I'm not gonna enjoy it that much and then when I finished reading Carrie Maniscalco's other series The Stalking Jack the Ripper that's when it clicked to me and I was like oh my word Carrie Maniscalco she wrote Kingdom of the Wicked I really liked the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I love the writing and I love the characters. So I was like, okay, you know, the premise is interesting. Maybe I should just give it a try because I like the author. And I am so petty, you guys. I am so incredibly petty because I love this book. Like I said, it was a five stars. I cannot believe I forced myself to wait this long to give in to finally reading it. It was amazing. I love the characters. I love the Italian influence, the magic. So basically what happens in this book is you, you have these twin witch sisters and you know, they're just happily living their life in Italy until one of them actually ends up murdered. And so the other one, our main character, decides that she needs to solve her sister's murder because no one else is gonna do it. And so in order to do so, she ends up summoning a demon to help her but after she completes the summoning she realizes oh this isn't just a demon this is one of the seven princes of hell she summoned prince wrath then they have to go solve her sister's murder i love this book so much that in january snake peek i read books two and three immediately like i actually loved this book so much that i prioritized finishing the series which says a lot. If you are familiar with my channel, you know that I am absolutely atrocious at continuing on series, even if I love them. So the fact that I sat and binged this series means a lot. I was constantly intrigued. Also, I just have to say the audiobook for this is phenomenal. There are sound effects. There's music background during the book when a prophecy or something is being read out, they do a sound effect on the narrator's voice. Or when it's an important or intense moment, they will, they will add in little bits of music. So I highly, highly recommend the audiobook because it just elevated the reading experience so much. And I am so glad that I own this. I do have the dust jacket for it. It is in Minnesota. When I travel with hard books, I don't like traveling with the dust jackets because I don't like them getting like wrinkled or ripped or anything like that. So this was a five star read above and beyond my expectations. I was just so thrilled <laughs> the whole way through. The next I had three four star reads, which is, is pretty good. And I think 
Most of these were pretty shocking that they were four star reads. So the first one is These Witches Don't Burn. I've got a couple of like Halloween leftovers in December, which is like December is when I want to be reading Christmas books, not spooky season, but you know, I'm glad I read them and uh, <laughs> we can move on. I read them pretty early in the month so that I could transition into Christmas reads, even though I think I read more Christmas reads in November than I did in December. <laughs> anyway, not the point. These witches don't burn. This one surprised me how much I enjoyed it. I felt like this book was a crescendo. It started off like good, kind of where I expected it to be, and then it just got better and better, and I was like, oh my word, this is getting really good. Wait, is this getting really good? Yeah, this is getting really good. Why, why? Just wasn't expecting it from this book. It was so surprising, so it was like a four star. I liked the romance, I liked the mystery plot, there were some red herrings in there. There are just these strange witchy things happening around town in Salem, so the real witch needs to go and figure out what's going on. It's YA to the point of like, I was I was almost annoyed that it was YA, that was like, oh my word, eye roll, but by the end of it, I was like, wow, this character is like grown up and there's maturity happening here and yeah, it was just really satisfying, weirdly enough, to read. I may or may not read the second book. We'll see. Then there was also The Monarchs, and this is the second book in the duology. The first book was The Ravens. I read that a couple years ago. And this one, too. I I enjoyed it so much. Like, it, the first book ended the plot on its own, so it's not like a, a continuation or a cliffhanger. So I didn't know what to expect going into The Monarchs, but I, like I said, I enjoyed it. I liked the relationship with the characters and the characters' relationships with each other. And there are lots of twists and like the background, we're getting so much more background on our main character. So this, if you don't know, The Ravens follows a sorority that's actually a coven of witches. And there are some pretty spooky things happening on campus that these witches need to figure out without exposing that they are a coven of witches. And everyone who's been in this sorority are all witches. Like, it's like kind of a generational thing. And so that was a really interesting uh, way to read about it. And then the final four-star read was not a book that I was expecting to pick up. My co-worker picked it up and she was like, oh my word, I love this, you have to read it. And so I read it for her, and that was The Silent Patient by, uh, you know, Alex Michaelides, Michaelides, Michael, whatever, however you say that. I was surprised that I liked this one. It's, oh, it takes a while to, to build, and I was like, I'm getting so much on the main therapist that, like, what's gonna happen, blah, blah, blah. But then as the twist, like, right before the twist was revealed, I was like, wait, what? Could it be? No. That's not what it's gonna be. And then they revealed the twist and I was like, oh my word, that's exactly it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So it made me just want to start the book from the beginning again. This book follows this therapist who wants to talk to the silent patient. This is a woman who murdered her husband and hasn't said a word since. And so he wants to be her therapist and try and get her to open up, et cetera, and so forth. Like, I was I was a little thrown off with the ending, just I was like, oh, I wish it had ended like this. This would have been a little cooler if they could have extended this certain aspect a little bit longer. Like, it wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. I don't know if I want to read The Maidens by this author because I heard a lot of people love one book but not the other, and The Maidens didn't really capture my interest, but we'll see. We'll see next spooky season how I feel. Moving on to three star reads. I had three, three star reads. And the first was The Witch Haven. So this was a really hyped up book. It is about a woman who kind of gets into a little bit of trouble. And instead of getting arrested, she is taken to The Witch Haven where she can learn about her magical ability. She's safe from the fact that she kind of murdered this dude with her magical power she didn't know she had. This is the first book in a, was it duology, trilogy, mm, I don't know, there's another book. 
but this book was just super hyped up. Everybody was loving it, but honestly, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I think it was overhyped. I think my expectations for it were too high. The school, I wasn't super thrilled with. It didn't feel like anything unique or like rich in its own magic system or anything like that. I was like, okay, it's happening. And the main character kind of felt like the same way of like, this isn't really what I wanted to learn, but the way that they go about learning what they want to, I was like, don't really care. Can something happen? Please. And there was just a lot of various things that were happening. And I was like, not super thrilled by it. Not near as good as I expected it to be. So I was, I was quite bummed about that one, but like it was still a solid book. Honestly, I think if it wasn't hyped up so much, no, actually I don't think I would have liked it more. The other two three-star books were also Halloween witchy books. So I have Not the Witch You Wed by uh, April Asher and this book, I was expecting it to be one thing because the title is not the witch you wed. So I expected it to be like they got married and they didn't. And it bummed me out so much. So it follows our main character who is a witch but doesn't have any actual like magic. So because of that, she will not be inheriting the like high like leader of the witches that her grandmother is. It's going to go to her sister. But she is still required to mate with another another supernatural creature. Walk in our werewolf male main character. And now these characters have previous history and it didn't end well. I'm not normally one for second chance romance. And I mean, I felt like that element was meh. But like, I was told this was going to be a fake dating and it just I don't know it didn't feel like fake dating but it also just wasn't anything else you know like I thought and it was well written and I did like the characters and kind of the chemistry and what happened between them like it was a solid book I think I just had my own vision of what this book was going to be that they were going to be uh, fake dating, getting married, and then falling in love, and it just wasn't that, and I don't know, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I had hoped, but it was still really good. I would still recommend this, definitely. And then the last three-star book that I read was Payback's A Witch. I feel like it lost sight of what it was partway through the book, you know, where I feel like the whole premise what the summary tells you this book is going to be about just kind of disappeared partway through and just didn't reappear at all. So Payback's a Witch is about this witch who finds out, you know, her boyfriend was like cheating on her and was not um, very good. And so she kind of gangs up with these other two women that he had romantic history with and they all decide to uh, do some payback, you know, get a little revenge scheme going. At the same time that the major families of this town, the major witch families of this town are having this like competition of who is going to be like the top clan for the next uh, X amount of years. And the thing is, is that again, it was a well-written book. It was a good book, but it lost sight of itself because it was like, okay, they're going to get revenge on this guy, but basically how they're gonna do it is by not letting his family win the competition, which is like, that's kind of how competition works. And then it was more focused on our main character falling in love with one of the other girls and their romance rather than actually pay back revenge on the guy. And I mean, the love story was cute and I liked the characters and they had decent chemistry. But I wanted more revenge. I wanted more payback. I wanted more like badass, you're not gonna mess with us. And I just felt like that was lacking. But it was still like a solidly written book. So it was a three star, you know, it was average. And the eighth and final book that I read in December was Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. And this was a two star book. This follows two main characters. We have Stella who is very recently released from 
prison and she is standing outside of this super big department store that is like the number one department store ooh la la and she is criticizing to this stranger the window display because that's where her passion is she loves window displays little does she know that he is actually the manager of the store and he invites her to apply for the job of being the window dresser this is grumpy sunshine workplace romance and I was not thrilled with this at all. I loved the premise. I thought the window dressing was super unique and I was excited for just smutty Christmas vibes. And I didn't like the chemistry. The The guy is the sunshine, but I feel like he just wasn't sunshiny. Like the only sunshine thing about him was his appearance, like how he would wear these Christmas bow ties. But other than that, he was just constantly like worried about her annoyed with his family figuring out like he he didn't seem very sunshiny and then Stella was like not grumpy either she was just like nervous about everything because she had just got out of prison and she's young she didn't think she would find a job let alone her dream career and so she's not grumpy she's just cautious on how to re-enter the world and like I wish it was more grumpy sunshine, you know? And she, you can't be a grumpy Grinch if you're, like, decorating windows for Christmas, you know? That's just not how that works. And so I was definitely missing that. And the chemistry between the character was kind of good, kind of not. Like, it was a little, just not quite there. Like, it was very clear that this was an earlier written novel that, of this author, like, she... She had, she has growth to go from here. And I read her other book, My Killer Vacation, and that book was much better. So I can definitely see the growth between this book and that book. Those were the eight books that I read in December, the final month of 2022. Thank you all very much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe as I post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. Theoretically, January is a little bit of uh, a mess. I'm just kind of editing videos and posting them as soon as they're done. So you definitely want to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when those videos are going up. But come February, I hope to be getting back into my regularly scheduled postings. Also, I have social media linked down below. You can see what I'm reading as I'm reading it and my kind of more immediate thoughts on my Instagram and I post book reviews there as well. Comment down below how your last month of 2022 went. Were you able to do a lot of reading because of days off for the holiday or not so much because you were visiting and hanging out with family like me? I would love to hear from you, but until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading!